Welcome to Hot Off The Press, the channel that brings you the most captivating stories from the world of entertainment, where we explore the journeys of those who've dared to challenge the status quo. In today's episode, we delve into the electrifying narrative of one of pop culture's most iconic figures, Miley Cyrus. In the mid-2000s, a young girl named Destiny Hope Cyrus, affectionately known as Smiley by her parents, embarked on a journey that would forever alter the course of her life. At the time, her father was a globetrotting country music sensation, but Miley's heart was set on a different path, acting. In 2001, at the tender age of nine, she made her initial foray into the world of acting, landing a role as Kylie in the TV drama Doc. It was here that her passion for the craft ignited. Miley's burgeoning acting career saw her take on smaller roles like Ruthie in the film of Big Fish. Yet her destiny would soon take an unexpected turn when a lifetime opportunity emerged, the chance to star in Disney Channel's groundbreaking series, Hannah Montana. The show, created by Michael Poirier, centered around the life of a teenage girl leading a double existence as a beloved pop sensation. For many, Hannah Montana remains a cherished memory, a symbol of nostalgia and an embodiment of positive childhood experiences. However, Miley Cyrus's personal journey during those formative years was starkly different. Disney, with its immense power and influence, held a tight grip on her life, extending far beyond mere ownership of her name. From 2006 to 2011, Miley Cyrus was not just a cast member. She was, in many ways, Disney's own creation. Yet this partnership came at a cost. Miley was the lowest paid member of the cast, working gruelly 12-hour shifts, all while navigating the turbulent waters of her teenage years. Her struggles with identity were palpable, and the pressures of fame weighed heavily on her young shoulders. In the early 2010s, it seemed as though Miley was on a collision course with the all-too-familiar narrative of child star spiraling out of control. Was her wild phase a genuine expression of her inner turmoil, or had Disney orchestrated it all? The question hung in the air, a testament to the staggering power and control the conglomerate exerted over this young star. But Miley Cyrus refused to bow down. Instead of succumbing to Disney's dominance, she resolved to reclaim what was rightfully hers. She embarked on a journey to regain her autonomy and make Disney reconsider its hold on her life. It was a battle that would shape her future and redefine her relationship with the entertainment giant. Little did Miley and the world know that the inception of Hannah Montana had been years in the making. The show's concept had been brewing long before it graced our television screens. Over 1,000 young hopefuls auditioned for roles in the series, but the decision makers at Disney were grappling with an unshakable uncertainty. They couldn't quite pinpoint who was the perfect fit for their ambitious project. Miley's initial encounter with Hannah Montana came when she was just 11 years old in 2002. Her first audition was for a supporting role, but her undeniable singing talent prompted the show's producers to encourage her to audition for the lead. And so, she sent in another audition tape, and another, each showcasing her exceptional abilities. However, it was evident that to make the crucial decision, they needed to see her in person. Miley journeyed to the audition, where she delivered a performance that left an indelible mark. Her raspy voice, unwavering confidence, and genuine Southern charm were precisely what Disney had been searching for. Miley didn't merely embody the character they had penned, she was the character. She was a small-town girl from Tennessee, a place where life revolved around school and a close-knit family. In a twist of fate, her famous musician father, Billy, was cast to play her on-screen dad. Their on-screen chemistry was so authentic that it couldn't be replicated. Here, the line between the character and the person blurred, leading to the character's name change from Chloe Stewart to Miley Stewart. When Hannah Montana made its debut in March 2006, it drew a staggering 5.4 million viewers, marking the highest TV show premiere in Disney's storied history. Week after week, they maintained an impressive viewership, averaging around 3.5 million viewers per episode. Miley Cyrus had become a megastar, both in reality and on screen. She was living out her wildest dreams on the Disney stage, and everything appeared to be bathed in a perpetual golden glow. However, this newfound stardom also brought with it a torrent of pressure. Miley had transformed from an aspiring actress into an international sensation overnight. The path ahead would be far more challenging than she could have imagined. On the show and in real life, she found herself walking a tightrope of identity, a daunting task for someone so young. When Miley donned the iconic Hannah Montana wig, the response response from her fans was electric and somewhat bewildering. Hannah's admirers would scream excitedly when they spotted her, convinced she was their loved character. I'm Hannah. Wait, no, I'm Miley, she would declare, trying to distinguish the two personas. Yet the fans seemed to love her more when she transformed into Hannah, a testament to the character's magnetic allure. Behind this facade, however, Miley's mother, Tish, who also served as her manager, was unwittingly caught in a corporate web much larger than they had anticipated. The magnitude at which Disney could exploit a child star was 
was beyond their imagination. Shockingly, there was no negotiation regarding Miley's salary, rumored to be a mere $15,000 per episode, which paled in comparison to some of her co-star's earnings. They went along with the motions, assuming that everything was fine. Meanwhile, her father, Billy Ray Cyrus, experienced a resurgence in fame, performing shows and selling albums. Miley, too, received her modest paychecks, and on the surface, it appeared that all was well. However, at some point, the family began to realize they were receiving far less than what they were legally entitled to. At this juncture, Miley declared, my mother hired smart people to protect me. In a 2016 interview, Miley reflected on those early years, saying, I didn't know any better. My name was Miley on the show, but I didn't own my name. In the crisp January of 2008, a significant transformation took place in the life of Destiny Hope Cyrus. She legally changed her name to Miley Cyrus. She explained this decision by stating that Miley was the name she had identified with since a very young age and it felt right, especially considering that she was known as Miley to the world due to her show. While these reasons undoubtedly hold true, the subtle hint of we didn't think about that. When we peer beyond the surface, it becomes apparent that there may have been a more complex rationale driving Miley's decision. No one could have foreseen that Hannah Montana would become an overnight sensation, still those involved were well aware of its immense potential, particularly in terms of commercial success and financial gain. The years spent meticulously sifting through thousands of auditions in search of the right person were a testament to this calculated approach. In a video titled Disney's Pop Star Factory, I previously underscored the well-oiled machine that Disney had constructed with shows like Lizzie McGuire, The Cheetah Girls, and of course, Hannah Montana. Their strategy was efficient, identify talented individuals, cast them in a show, and then release soundtracks and original music under their label, Hollywood Records, reaping millions from both the television and music industries. Lizzie and The Cheetah Girls served a successful trial run, but nothing could have prepared them for the magnitude of Hannah Montana's success. The show premiered to millions of viewers every week, and the very first Hannah Montana album, released in 2006, achieved triple platinum status. Yet, it appears that Miley received minimal, if any, payment for this album. It is even credited under various artists rather than to her name. Furthermore, it was released under Walt Disney Records, which primarily specializes in soundtracks, compilations, and remix albums as opposed to Hollywood Records, their label for authentic music albums. To compound matters, merchandise featuring Hannah Montana was flying off the shelves at an astonishing rate. T-shirts, dolls, phones, pencils, purses, posters, keychains. They were selling everything imaginable. Most of this merchandise was centered around Hannah Montana, a Disney rightfully owned and created character. Hence, it stands to reason that Miley wasn't receiving the royalties she deserved. During the second season of Hannah Montana, the narrative takes an interesting twist. In June 2007, a pivotal moment occurred with the release of the Hannah Montana 2 album. This release wasn't just another soundtrack, it came bundled with a second disc entitled Meet Miley Cyrus. This innovative move was not just a musical transition, but a transformation that would send shockwaves through the music industry. The album soared to number one on the Billboard Hot 200 chart and immediately sold a staggering 3 million copies. What followed was a tour of epic proportions, 70 shows in almost three and a half months, each in massive stadiums housing 10,000 to 15,000 fans. These stadiums sold out in a matter of minutes, and the tour amassed a staggering $70 million in revenue. On the surface, it seemed like Miley was reaping significant rewards. She received a performance fee ranging from $10,000 to $30,000 per show, which would have amounted to approximately $1 to $1.5 million for the entire tour. But it gets intriguing here. Her name was on that tour. She had become synonymous with the brand. With the right negotiations, Miley could have owned a significant percentage of the entire enterprise, potentially raking in anywhere from $10 to $20 million. However, the crux of the matter lay in the fact that she did not own her name. People called her Miley Cyrus, but technically, that was her stage name. The tides began to shift in January 2008, marking the culmination of the Best of Both Worlds tour. This was not just the end of a tour, it signaled the conclusion of an era. Apart from the release of the Hannah Montana movie, this was the last time Miley would ever grace the stage as the iconic Hannah Montana character. Early 2008 also marked a significant moment. Destiny Hope illegally changed her name to Miley Cyrus. The decision to change her name was strategic, serving as a potential contractual loophole. Changing her name to evade existing contracts wasn't a simple matter, as it's not that easy. Otherwise, everyone with a mortgage would be swapping names to escape their debt. However, Miley had been working tirelessly, almost like a service dog, for close to two years, performing in sold-out stadiums across the globe. While this level of success should have been enough to set her up for life, there appeared to be complexities at play. Changing her name could have allowed her to enter into new contracts and negotiate better terms. It was a shrewd move, guided by the smart advisors that Tish had enlisted. Destiny Hope had previously signed some form of contract with Walt Disney Records while recording and releasing the Hannah Montana albums. However, the legal 
legal name changes to Miley Cyrus potentially open doors for her to sign a new contract with Hollywood Records and release her upcoming album Breakout under a new stage name. At its core, Hannah Montana was not just a character, but a reflection of Miley herself. The show's essence lay in the idea that behind the glamorous wig was a normal girl, Miley. Strip away the costume and you have the same person, heart, and dreams. Yet while symbolizing the show's concept, the wig began to feel like a stifling mask. Miley's identity, both as an artist and a person, felt confined by the persona of Hannah Montana. The desire to break free from this constraint, spread her wings, and discover her voice grew stronger with each passing day. In July 2008, Miley released her album Breakout, which was met with commercial success, earning platinum status in just a few months. However, around the same time, controversy erupted over a topless photo shoot with Vanity Fair. Miley and her family saw it as an artistic expression, but she succumbed to pressure and apologized for the photo's perceived provocativeness. It was a moment that highlighted her struggle to balance her evolving identity with the expectations placed upon her. Further complicating matters, private photos of Miley with her boyfriend at the time were leaked, leading to even more scrutiny. With its emphasis on maintaining a squeaky clean image for its stars, Disney grew increasingly impatient with her actions. Miley, now on the brink of turning 17, was teetering on a fine line. Throughout 2008, Miley juggled a hectic schedule, filming the 30-episode season 3 of Hannah Montana while also working on new music. In 2009, she released Party in the USA, a massive hit that eventually sold 10 million records, becoming one of her defining songs. Her performance of the single at the Teen Choice Awards raised eyebrows due to a pole dance routine, although it was relatively mild. Disney's patience was wearing thin, and it became evident that Miley was growing beyond the bounds of her carefully crafted image. At 16, about to turn 17, Miley embarked on the Wonder World Tour. What set this tour apart was her decision not to perform as Hannah Montana at all. It was a bold move that signaled her determination to break free from the constraints of the character that had made her a household name. The tour spanned 56 shows, with revenues ranging from 10,000 to 20,000 capacity. Notably, she sold out at the O2 Arena in London for five consecutive nights in just one month. This achievement underscored the magnitude of her fame at such a tender age. Miley sold over 800,000 tickets on this tour, and it grossed a staggering $66 million. It became abundantly clear that Miley Cyrus could stand on her own without the guise of Hannah Montana. The young artist was coming into her own, and the battle for her identity was in full swing. One can only speculate, but it's highly plausible that Miley's financial outlook improved with the legal name change. Consider this, she embarked on a grueling 70-show Hannah Montana Best of Both Worlds tour, which grossed a staggering $70 million. Following this momentual tour, she dived into another 50 six show tour, this time as Miley, after wrapping up a whole new season of the show. This was an extraordinary amount of work and pressure for a teenager to endure. Perhaps the Miley tour offered greater ownership and potentially much more significant financial rewards. It could have been a strategic move, a way to demonstrate that Miley didn't need to be Hannah Montana anymore. It might have been a bid to gain leverage and assert that Miley was ready to move beyond this iconic character, as challenging as that decision may have been. Maybe her parents and advisors contemplated, let's just do this one tour and we can take a break for a while. After all, Miley had been portraying this character since she was 12 and the weight of that persona was taking its toll. In 2010, the release of Hannah Montana season 4 was postponed because of her busy touring schedule. However, beneath the surface, it was abundantly clear that Miley was fed up with the character that had defined her for so long. It was a character that she had outgrown and her desire for independence and self-expression was becoming increasingly evident. Amidst this transformation, she released her album Can't Be Tamed with Holly Hollywood Records in the middle of 2010. This album's title alone speaks volumes about her desire to break free from the constraints of her image. The music video for this single stirred controversy once again as she was depicted in a manner considered scandalous at the time, though by today's standards, it might seem mild. Miley was publicly declaring her intention to shed the skin of Hannah Montana, embracing a new era of self-discovery and artistic growth. Season 4 of Hannah Montana had not yet been released, leaving a glimmer of hope for her fans who were still immersed in the world of their beloved character. But for Miley, it was an era that was drawing to a close. She was moving on to new horizons, determined to break free from the shackles of her Disney past. However, the release of her album Can't Be Teamed marked a commercial downturn compared to her previous successes. The record failed to reach gold status and faced a lukewarm critical reception. Miley didn't even embark on a North American tour to promote the album in a surprising move. This may have been a pivotal moment when Hollywood Records reminded her of her enduring appeal as Hannah Montana. Perhaps her public declaration of readiness to move on was causing a rift with her fans, she was trapped in a dichotomy. Her old fans still saw her as the Disney
Disney girl while new fans remained elusive. A few weeks after turning 18, a video of Miley smoking salvia from a bong leaked, causing Disney to erupt in anger. It was an open secret that Miley had experimented with substances even during her time on the show, but she had managed to keep it hidden. Furthermore, she had a massive clothing brand deal with Walmart in the works, but when the news of the bong incident broke, they severed all ties with her. Miley's live performances were becoming more provocative, though by today's standards, they were remarkably mild. She began to openly acknowledge the harsh realities of being a child star, the pressure to conform, the media training that molded her responses, and the constant awareness of how Disney would perceive her every move. In 2011, Miley experienced her first real break from Disney. However, with reruns of Hannah Montana still dominating the screens and the show's colossal impact, it seemed she could never fully escape its shadow. Everywhere she went, people wanted to talk about her iconic character. It was what she was perpetually known for. Even a simple haircut led to speculations that she was going off the rails, a narrative all too familiar for formal child stars. The world had known her as the Disney darling, but she was determined to shatter that image and assert her independence in the most audacious way possible. When Miley Cyrus took to the stage at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards, VMAs, the world watched in shock as she twerked alongside Robin Thicke. It was a moment that ignited outrage and catapulted her into the global spotlight, but many didn't realize this was a calculated move. Miley wasn't spiraling out of control, she was seeking to put on a gratuitous display of emotion. She had a precise goal in mind to get the entire world talking about her music, and she achieved it with resounding success. The twerking incident sparked a firestorm of criticism, with celebrities and the public alike branding her as a stripper, a hooker, and trashy. Undeterred, Miley swiftly pivoted to an artistic direction with the release of the Wrecking Ball music video. Yet even this artistic endeavor was met with skepticism, many viewed it as yet another attention-seeking stunt. Miley didn't stop there. At the MTV European Music Awards EMAs, she led a joint on stage collaborating with Juicy J, Mike Will Made It, and a host of other rappers. Regardless of her actions, the narrative remained the same. She was a Disney star gone wild, trying too hard. However, if you listen to her interviews and hear her speak at this juncture, you'll realize that every move was part of a carefully calculated strategy. She was self-aware, conscious, and in full control of her transformation. Miley was evolving, learning, and finding her independence. Her public persona was a means to an end, a way to keep the media buzzing while she continued to amass a fortune. The results were staggering. Her album Bangers went three times platinum, and the single We Can't Stop achieved five times platinum status. The Wrecking Ball music video garnered a staggering 1.5 billion views and went seven times platinum. Nearly a decade later, we're still talking about this bold reinvention. It's essential to understand that Miley's transformation wasn't just about business, it was also a means to escape the child star stigma that had clung to her since her Disney days. Her wild phase began to wane after 2013, leaving us to wonder whether it was a calculated move for her career or a personal quest to break free from the constraints that had defined her for so long. Reflecting on Miley's incredible journey reminds us that reinvention is possible and one's past does not have to define their future. Miley Cyrus's story is a testament to the power of self-discovery, artistic growth, and resilience. So, my dear viewers, as we end this video, we encourage you to share your thoughts in the comment section below. For more captivating stories like this, stay tuned to Hot Off The Press by subscribing to our channel.